or technology during the holidays, whether it was a new smartphone, tablet, computer, PlayStation, whatever, it may have parents worried about screen time. Michael Mercier is the mind behind screen education, a group that's doing some major research on screen time's effects and addiction, particularly in teens, and it is a nonprofit group. Michael, good to see you. You too, thank Thanks you. for coming in today. Yeah, uh, tell me a little bit more about your research. I know it's more than just how much screen time is good or bad. It's a lot more in depth than that. Right, so we've, we've done a, we're working on our 11th study right now and we've done a number of studies with uh, kids attending summer camps that don't allow them to bring phones. So they're spending two to four weeks without phones. So a lot of the research we've done is talking to kids while they're going through this experience of being deprived of their phones. And, and what we, when we started doing this, we thought, oh, they're gonna be going crazy missing their phones. Right. And, and we really were surprised to find it was, it was actually the complete opposite. So kids are basically telling us in our, our local um, focus groups and our national surveys that they realize that they have a major problem. And um, Why do kids get addicted to their screens, in particular their smartphones? Right, well, th at, at the most fundamental level, I mean, to simplify it, um, they're, they're exposed to an infinite amount of hyper-engaging content. So, you know, it, it appeals to their basic human drives, like the drive to compete, to engage people socially, to, to consume narratives like on YouTube, um, but it also appeals to their, their deep personal interests, so it's almost like it's hyper-customized for mm. them, um, and they just find it irresistible. But, the, you know, so the, the real problem here is um, they have infinite exposure to this irresistible content 24-7 <laughs> on this device they can take everywhere, so there are no limits. There are no natural limits do on they, their ability. Uh, do they wish that they weren't addicted? Do they wish that their parents would take it away and they yeah. could have a break? Like, and, what do they want? Well, and that's been, that's been a, a major area of focus in our research. So we found, for example, a national survey we did uh, in June, 65% of teens said they wish they had a greater ability to self-limit their screen time. And then we just completed a national survey with the Jewish Community Center Association of North America. Mm -hmm. And it was something like 69% of teens said they'd be happier if they could spend less time on their phones. So is it up to parents? Is it up to us to say, okay, well, we're gonna put some limits on this then? Yeah, I if think- If kids can't. Yeah, and th that's the big challenge, right? Right. Putting, putting limits because research is also showing that kids are basically saying they're just continuously online all day long, right? So it's, it's a real challenge to limit it. So um, I think, you know, there are a couple of things parents can do. One is to, to focus on um, limiting multitasking. So for example, it, the phones are really interfering with schoolwork and, mm -hmm. and homework, right? So if your kid is multitasking on their phone while they're doing their homework, you know, that, that's a good time to say, look, we, we can't allow this. Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's also a common thing to say, all right, during dinner. Right. Or any, even preventing them from taking the phones to bed because they're staying up for hours sometimes on their phones when they go to bed. I know there's so much more we could talk about, but th that's, those are some really good jumping off points, I think, to help parents. Michael, thank you so much. It was, uh, where can people learn more if they want? Uh, if they, they can go to my website at screeneducation.org. Screeneducation.org. Michael, thank you so much. All right, thank All you. Right.